Hello, welcome to episode three of my TT Gauge uh, layout build. Now, it's been a bit of a while since the last one, and that's because I've been busy putting a new floor into the garage. And I had a few issues with the old one. But this time, I've been adding some bridges to the layout. So let's see how I've been getting on. So I was going to scratch build the entire bridge at this end, uh, but I went rooting through my engage parts box and I found these tunnel portals and I thought they would work quite well for the bridge. So obviously they're engaged, so need to check that they'll work with TT. As you can see, these two coaches here fit nicely, although the tracks are a little squeezed together, I just realised. I'll just pull them back out straight so it's actually got some passing area. As you can see, there's plenty of room for stock to pass through. So that will be the main bridge here for the main lines. Uh, this siding is going to be cut short a little bit, so it'll probably end about here. I'll have a retaining wall here, so it's um, sort of the impression that the main lines are here. This bit was depot put in later, um, and then I'll have a different style bridge here. So this retaining wall and then an occupation bridge, and it's all occupation bridge for a farm. Um, and then as I say, over here, we'll just have an embankment wrapped around for that scenic area. So that's what I'm gonna do for this bridge. Okay, so I need to do the arch, um, for the bridge. Um, so Pico have these little tabs here that hold in some card or plastic card, whatever your material you decide to use for there. Um, previously, I remember when I first started out in layouts, I was just used to a bit of a blank card, but it looks a bit rubbish because you've got this lovely stone texture and then like this smooth blank card that's usually painted black. It looks awful. So this time, I'm just gonna use a bit of this uh, brick plastic card sheet and the three millimeter stuff that i have um and i'm going to wrap it around the uh, dots here and then uh, use some plastic cement to hold it in place um so to measure it up i got uh, a bit of the cork that i had left over from the layout build and i just basically wrapped that around the arch and then measured put a little mark on the cork measured it up and that gave me 14.6 centimeters um, to go around the edge. So if you have one of these N-gauge balls and want to use one, you now know it's 14.6 centimetres. You don't need to do that. I've done it for you. You're welcome. Um, so that's just going to be cut to the size like that. Fits in there nicely. You just put it around. And I'm just going to put this plastic cement. I'll probably have to hold it for a couple of minutes. And then I'll do the other side. And that'll be the arch of the bridge done. And there we are, that's the uh, first bit of the bridge built then. So you can see the arch is glued in nicely. Um, plastic sheet is definitely the way forward. I don't remember trying to make those curves with cardboard and because you're trying to sort of get um, you know, like a PVA glue or something to try and hold the card in place to the plastic structure, you'd have to clamp it, hold it, it'd move the card to sort of bend and bow. The plastic, I mean, the weld has just held it in place immediately. Um, I sandwiched the two together. I had to recut these bits of card because I originally cut them as three centimeters, the same width as the arch, um, but they have slight indents, as you can see. So they were actually uh, 3.2 um, centimeters. So um, cut them uh, slightly wider to fit between the gaps. And then also had to take consideration that there's gonna be a road on top. So originally they went right to the top, but I've cut them down so I can put a road over that. Um, and the height of them, is to the top of this arch, so the road to come across there, and I've checked with a TT scale person, and his waist is about to the top of this wall, so it's roughly about the right height to stop someone falling over the edge, unlike those railings over there. So that's the main line bridge done. Uh, next, we'll be concentrating on the retaining wall and the slightly newer bridge over the point section here going into the depot. 
Right then, uh, I've marked out the bridge and retaining wall for the other part, and this is just some cardboard for now, and then I'm just going to use the uh, brick embossed plastic card to build up the effects. So, sort of brick here, maybe supports here, here, that wall here, the main wall there, and more brick there, then a metal plate here, and then a girder here. Um, these two will probably be built with card, and then as I say, the rest of it just be some lost plastic built in varying levels of height to give it that 3D effect. So I've built up uh, the brick area for the sort of 3D effect, so I'll uh, cover that with the embossed sheet. And then I've done a back wall and just drawn around the edge of the stonework because that needs to be sort of butted up right to the edge because that's going to be on the, on the back scene. Um, and then if the back scene ever comes away to extend the layout, then I'll just have like a um, greenery down this side. So that's done like that. And then uh, I've saved the cutouts here because they're obviously going to be the right height. And I've just trimmed them down to the right measurement to fit between here and here. This is 2.9 centimetres and they're just going to be glued on to start building the wall. Right, that's all the uh, embossed uh, brick plastic card added to the bridge then. Um, I'm not quite sure what's happened here. I thought I got it all right, but originally there was a bit of card that stuck up here. And that was for this bridge to slot around it. And then on the back, I sort of you know, drew with a pencil and cut the shape out of the brickwork from the bridge so that butted up together perfectly. But then when I tried doing that, everything was pulled out of its um, 45 degree angle, so it wasn't quite right. So I fiddled around with it, I played about, and in the end, I cut the plastic card to the same shape as the cardboard. And so it now just butts up like that. So, um, but I'll join it all together and that should be fine. Uh, so I just need to now do the girder bridge bit here and then obviously put a road surface in. And here we are then, this is the bridge all ready for painting. So uh, to finish it off, I just used a bit of card and some micro strip just to make the plate girders. I put a few bits on the bottom of the bridge there. And then I've got a cardboard floor for the roadway. Um, I might need to do something about this at some point. We'll see how it looks when it's painted. And um, yeah, I think it's looking all right. Uh, that's the bridge at this end then all primed ready for painting um, so before I do that I'm going to move on to the bridge at this end um, this is going to be just sort of in this corner here because obviously I can't have it directly going across because I've got the warehouse in the way and um, I didn't want it covering up the buffer ends or anything like that but I still need to give this main line somewhere to disappear into so this will be like a busy um, probably like a dual carriageway or an A road maybe a B road something like that a busy road anyway, um, quite large, just covering this corner for the mainline tracks to disappear under. Uh, simple bridge really, I think, just have a road surface and then a pillar here and a pillar here and that'll probably be uh, the extent of this bridge and then I'm just going to use these end gauge girders just on the top. <laughs> Right, there we are. This is the uh, bridge all assembled together for its card parts, at least. Um, so now it's just a case of just uh, the embossed brick plastic card over here. Again, we'll have a grey uh, sort of metal girder to represent the strength of the bridge there. And then I will put these N gauge Pico girders on top across here. And then do something on the road surface there. And that'll be the, that bridge done. Right, that's the uh, corner bridge uh, built. Just got a bit of tape there just to hold the girders in place once the glue dries. 
Just add a little bit of card at the top for some pavement. So that'll be the road surface. And then there's just the embossed card on the sides. Uh, strangely, I measured it up, um, but when I came to glue the parts, they didn't line up. So it's just got a bit of filler in the corner there. It's not the end of the world, but uh, it looks all right. So that I just need a prime and a paint. Okay, I'm gonna paint the bridges. Uh, and as you can see, they are now a lot browner in color. And that's because I've got some Humbrol uh, brown spray and I've just coated them all um, as sort of a base coat. And this I found was really um, helpful um, because it's what I'd done with the wall that went around the fuel tanks. And what that means is that when I come to use this live color warm brick, because it's quite a thin paint, you usually have to put lots and lots of coats on, wait for it to dry, and then you try and do the um, mortar lining. It might wipe the brick away, but with this, it um, I just put it on in I think one or two coats, and it sort of varied in its tones, and it came out really well. It's like brickwork, but this is the undercoat. Um, so I'm going to do that with all this brickwork here. Okay, uh, the stonework on the bridge then uh, will obviously not be painted in this brick colour. I'm going to use the Life Colour um, Weathered Stone set, which is these, uh, I know, it's these six colours here. And then there's an additional one. This one came with the uh, Life Colour Debris and Rubble set and the stone wall. So it's a slightly lighter grey, but I'm going to try and concentrate on the reddish brown and sandstone colours for this bridge. Um, usually I opt for blue and green and a little bit of the light one but I thought I'd try something a bit different this time. So I started painting the brickwork and I thought do you know what this is a really slow and painful process and it kind of looks a bit blocky so I'm going to get a sponge and I'm going to try and just use a dabbing method of various shades of colour and see how that works. And this is the bridge after using the sponge method, which was a lot quicker and a lot easier and it looks a hell of a lot better. Um, so basically they use the same colours. I just got some chopped up bits of foam or sponge and just I just dip them in the lid. So there's a little bit of paint on there and then just dab it on in places, get another colour, mix them up, and then, you know, sometimes just get a cleaner sponge and just dab all around till it all blends in. I think that looks really good. Um, the walls are looking all right. I think they just need a little bit of a mortar wash just to um, highlight the bricks a bit better. And then it's just a case of painting the girders and probably need to put a little bit of graffiti around the bottom of the ridge. And that's pretty much ready to go. Right, so you can see I've uh, done the wall and I have also done the girder and all the other sort of plates around the bridge there. And then I'll just give it a neutral grey wash just to weather it a little bit. And then I'll sort that out once it's on the layout because that'd be like a farm track and do that. Um, so as I'm doing a modern day and that's a nice big canvas and it's on railway property, it's lacking some graffiti. So I'm going to graffiti all this wall up. Um, just to give it, well, a modern day look.
And there it is, that's the uh, finished graffiti. So what I did was I just drew it on in pencil first, uh, then used these um, Posca paint pens, in particular the white one, to do the outlining before filling the colours in on the inside. Uh, and then once I've done that, I've just gone round and just tagged around the bottom of the bridge where um, some less talented graffiti artists have also been vandalising. But as you can see, this work is by Matt Varnish. Um, I believe he writes into Viz magazine every now and again and uh, calls himself Wigan's answer to Banksy. Uh, so he's been having a go here and he's done the Mandalorian from Star Wars. Uh, the other colours then, they have just been filled in with Vallejo game colour. Um, when I haven't had the paint pens, but the, yeah, the paint pens are really useful things. Um, I mean, the yellow and the white are really good for doing uh, lines on roadways as well. So they're quite a good tool to have in your kit for your model railway. I would recommend getting some. The build had to be put on hold for a bit because it was a very important job I'd been putting off for a couple of years. And this is the reason why the job got put on hold was because I needed to put some flooring into the garage as I was having some issues with some uh, damp and obviously in the winter it was really cold in here because the floor wasn't insulated. So I've now insulated the floor, put some nice new flooring down, which also has the advantage I can go Sam's train style and have a test track on the floor. And uh, yeah, it's a lot cleaner in here. Sort of. I mean, it's messy there, and there, it's fine there. And with the floor all installed, it was time to get back to the layout. Right then, I've been vandalising the other bridge. Ooh, uh, in the case of here, Matt Varnish has. Uh, so I'll probably set the layout somewhere around the Yorkshire area. So I thought I need United. A bit of uh, vandalism might suit. There's a few sort of unreadable tags. And then this amusing one I saw in the photo of the feed, which says jam slag. Not sure what that's about. Uh, back of it as well, I've done this uh, copied uh, cure. That's one I found on Instagram. Uh, so that's the bridge all nicely vandalised. I think next we'll be concentrating on the road and painting the girders. There we are, I've painted the bridge up, um, done the road. I used some uh, textured paint. Uh, I didn't particularly like it. I felt it was a bit too coarse, particularly for this scale. So I sanded it down. I kept it on the pavement. I think it's all right there, but for the road, it was a bit, say, a bit, bit rough and a bit coarse there. And I've just used paint pens uh, to make some double yellow lines and the white lines in the middle. So that's all painted. And then just where it's obviously cut off, I'll just paint it black around the sides and then gray underneath. And that's that bridge done. Right then, with the uh, bridges done, I'm going to lay the main line. So it's just the same as what I've done here. I'm going to put the cork down, do the track on top, and add some dropper wires so that it'll be a static display for now. But if I ever intended to extend the layout, uh, it'll have some running lines. <laughs> Then that's the uh, two main lines down. I had to readjust the track here because when I tested with the coaches, they were you they could pass through, but it was very, very close to this edge here. So you see, I've just put stuck a drawing pin in there just while the glue was drying, just to force the track a little bit more inwards. But I think it still passes each other fine. Uh, so yeah, uh, and as you saw on the clip, yes, SBJ, that is the class fifty. I need to send you. I will get around to it, I promise. Um, so, next job, I think, is to work on the signal box, which is going to go here. Um, and then I think that's pretty much all the scenic buildings, and I can just start working on scenery.
Well, that's all for this episode. I hope again that you found it useful, informative, and if you liked it, then please click the thumbs up. If you want to see more, click subscribe. It helps my channel grow. It helps you find other videos because when you click the like button, it will always recommend other videos that other people like that also like this video. So everyone's a winner that way. So hopefully I'll see you again next time. And thanks for watching.